So Eddie, uh, we've had um, these two guys working together all day, and so we just had a press conference, yeah. and they really did have a long stay. Yeah, I don't know really what happened. Very long yeah. stay no, it was like it's not really Luke's style, but I think it was. You know, obviously, what it means to him is five. Also, to let him know that he's here and he's, you know, he's coming to win the fight. I told him three times, okay, like, look away, but obviously. It's always one of those sort of schoolyards. I think you look like this, and I'm not going to And you have to sort of almost drag him away. But it's interesting, I think. I like it. I like what sort of look at this fight. And you've got, that's what one of the questions I asked in the press was it's almost like respect, but not too much respect. Because if you go in there and, and give him too much respect and let Omachenko do what he does, which is be a genius, and almost like Collar's downfall in the fight was doing just that. I think style wise, it's a big problem. You know, it's too much for brother. It's a different style fight for cameras. But it's almost like you give him too catch me too. Give him too much respect, you let him dominate you. Don't give him any respect and be reckless, he's gonna pick you off the ease. So Luke's gotta be clever, he's gotta be sharp, he's gotta punch very hard, which he's doing. And he's here to win. I mean obviously last year you brought Alexander Rusic this country to yeah. fight Tony Kelly, that was very successful. But now arguably you've got the best pound for pound fight in the world coming. Is that rewarding as a put on as well? Your guy thinks number yeah. one pound for pound in the world. Yeah, and it's sort of, no, look, it's it's a it's an honour to bring the pound for pound number one to the UK, but we're doing it because we believe Luke Campbell can beat it. We're not doing it just for the occasion. Mm. And we could have gone to America for this fight. Luke could have made more money in America for this fight, but he believes he has a better chance of winning, and he's here to win this fight. So in that respect, this is what we have to do. There's all you know, people, the reaction of all the top fighters are going to America now, so let's bring pound for pound number one, and a, and a, a great British amateur and professional fighter in Luke Campbell to the UK for a big event to win the world title. And now this is part of... Uh, Five or six huge names that we've brought now to the UK with Errol Spence, with Terence Crawford, with Gennady Golovkin, with Usyk, and now Lomachenko. So it's great for British fight fans. And the response for the pre sale was one of the fastest selling pre sales for boxing at the O2. This is going to sell out or be very close today. So it's a big moment for British boxing. And I think because our fans are so educated, they understand the significance of this fight and, and the significance of Lomachenko making his pro debut in the UK. So do you think tickets? Be like, okay. Yeah, I believe they'll go today. I mean, we right, sell well. the pre-sale numbers are huge at the O2. We're on general sale in about an hour, half an hour. It's a, a must-see. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for a fight fan to see a fight like this. Um, just with Luke. Um, the point's been made, of course, that Nicola Adams did two Olympics, she got a lot of yeah. attention. Anthony Joshua won gold, yeah. obviously, Luke was a gold medalist in London as well. Um, and Anthony Joshua's kind of yeah. not stolen all the headlines, but he's been a very big story in British sure. boxing. Um, you know, Luke's 30 now, 30, 31, mm. very mature, mm. our most decorated amateur mm. in history on yeah. paper. Um, in many ways, is this very good timing for him? Yeah. This, is, it, it, it's this kind yeah, of I mean, moment. in terms of age and stuff like that, he's. He ain't got any miles on the clock. Mm. I mean, he looks 15. I mean, I, I must say, I meant to ask you, he went to, obviously, he fought for a world title before, yeah, yeah. Norris looked brilliant. I thought that. he won that fight. I agree. But the oh, knockdown, the yeah. knockdown was the turning point. If he didn't get knocked down that fight, which was a light knockdown, he would have won that fight. But he didn't believe in himself. He didn't have the training set up that he's got now. That's why I said one of the questions in the press conference, this is the perfect moment for Luke Kemp. This is the best chance he'll ever have to beat the city of because he's on point with everything. You know, he's punching harder than he's ever punched before. Technically, he's very comfortable with Shane McGuigan. He's got the experience now. And you know, Luke's one of those people. He's, he's an intelligent guy. He's not deluded. You can't just pump information in and tell him he's ready. And he knows when he's ready. And well, he knows his notebook all the time. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, he's he's but, but when he boxed the Nari, I don't think he truly believed he was ready. You know, he'd had the Mendy defeat, yes. he came back, he corrected that at Wembley in front of 80,000 people. And he's had those occasions. He's had London 2012, the debut outdoors in Hull, Tommy Coyle outdoors in Hull, uh, Lenares in LA. Where he didn't look out of place. No, not at all. But he never believed in himself. He's a different man yeah. than he was then. And this is just a great opportunity for him to be in a fight where, you know, he could, like, like George, George really summed it up well. George Cruz. Yeah, he, he basically said, this guy's trying to unify. He's been working away to get two belts. Now he's going for three. Luke just comes straight in. And not only does he take the three belts in the Ring Magazine Championship, but Luke takes a pound for pound position. 
So when you're going to gamble, at least gamble against the very, very best, and that's what Luke's doing. A bit of heavyweight housekeeping, great event at the mm. weekend, some stories resonating yeah, loads, from yeah. that. Um, uh, what have you heard about Dave Allen? Will you speak to him in a couple of weeks? Yeah, I spoke weeks? to him. I spoke to him yesterday. He's okay. Uh, disappointed. I mean, you know, obviously the health is a concern, but his performance wasn't good. I don't think David Price is getting enough credit because I thought he was really good. And uh, Dave took it on the chin and just said he's just too big and too good for me. Um, but Dave, you know, Dave's earned more money than he would have ever dreamed of making out of boxing. In the last and, year? Yes, and the most important thing is that he's happy and healthy. Yeah. So if that involves boxing or not, that's irrelevant. You've got to get the first two bits right. So we'll talk to him in a couple of weeks. It's very difficult for fighters coming off the back of a fight. You know, on the night, sometimes it's, I think that's it for me, I'm going to retire. The next day, it's like, I'm going to brush myself down and go again. You need a couple They're of weeks. They're grieving, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, they are. It's horrible. Yeah. Because it's not just like, you don't, you're not going over to the park and having a game of football and losing. You're doing it in front of the world, in a ring. Well, if someone made that comparison to me on Talk Sport last night saying, oh, Lionel Messi, I went, hang on a minute, no, no, you can't yeah, compare no, that no. with no, you know, boxing, losing boxing. a football game boxing and getting beaten most, up by a... Yeah, you know, no. Boxing is the most brutal game, in, and they said it, but it's not, it's just not the same. You know, They're not going in there, putting their health and their life on the line and having a fight for your entertainment. And when you lose and you get burned and you get stick on social media and you have to go through what they go through, in train and in the ring, you must think to yourself, I don't need this anymore. But then you realise you love the sport. It's not you or me. Like it's, it's almost like us walking away from boxing. We couldn't even do that, so how does the fight do? A couple of other, just two other questions on the heavyweight division. Obviously, lots of conundrums now. We know what Derek's going to do next. Probably going to fight Harper yeah. on one of your big cards in the autumn. Probably the O2 yeah. Arena again. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. I mean, that's. A, I thought Derek was absolutely electric. I mean, he's you improved. You remember an old heavyweight from the 70s? Yeah, I know, but you know, he's, like a, he's a money weight yeah, fighter. My, yeah, my dad it, said to me the other day, he's improved so much. You know, like he improved against Dylan in that second fight. Mm -hmm. And Spilker's a good fighter. Like, I expected Spilker to actually outbox him and outbox him. And he just said, no, 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 no. I'm just going to absolutely just take liberties with you. And it was a brutal knockout. And it was, you, know, you, never, need, you never normally see electric from Derek Shaw. You see grindy, you see tough, you see wars. But that was electric. Like the whole O2 was like, wow. Yeah. And now he's just launched himself. I, I went to dinner last night in London. And he, he's there. And he's like, where's my money? Give me my money, who's next? Oh, it's like, oh no. I, in, in some way, you want him to look bad and get a win so we can get him for cheaper. Now we've got to pay him for yeah, he's, 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 he's had me over plenty of times, but I love Derek Chisholm. <laughs> he's entitled to have me over. Yeah, he, he, he had the mood all week. Yeah, yeah, tell he was in the mood. Um, Dillian, um, Dillian White, brilliant victory for him on Saturday night. Very composed, came through the night for a knockout, knockdown. Um, didn't get drawn into a toe-to-toe -to -toe slugging yeah. match, and, and it was I thought it was a very composed yeah. draw performance. He won easily, but it was a very tough fight. Yeah, very, uh, very I mean, tough had fight. Had to come through, obviously, the knockdown. Yeah. Had to come through a revest that wouldn't stop trying. No, who and, definitely believed, didn't oh, he? Yeah, and a good fighter. Yeah. But Dillian, you know, he's so underrated. The jab was outstanding. Like, like 50 jabs around, think he go do that stout or something like that. The body punching was so good. So every time Rebass got momentum, he would hurt him. He would just slow him down a little bit. He got put down himself. Because you see him in the second round, he's just a, he's a madman. He's like, as soon as he smelled blood, that was it. And well, even Rebus, people like Jerry, um, Jerry Cooney says yeah. he really reminds me of that group yeah. from the 70s and 80s who all fought each other. He's just got, he, he's and he's a, still learning. You know, what did he have? Four correct. amateur fights, seven yeah. amateur yeah. fights. So, so what? what you know, having reflected on the weekend, what do you do with him next? Because well, 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 he's going to wait a year for a while. Yeah, about that. A bit, bit less, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. But he's mandatory. Yeah. And that's golden. No yeah. one can take that away from him. So what do you do in November, December? He's only got one fight in between this fight and the World Championship fight. So for me, it's to have a tough fight, but don't go too mad. Yeah. But he made a great point. He said, I don't want to He said, they're the dangerous ones. I don't want to look bad. I don't want to get beaten by someone I shouldn't. I want to get myself up for it. I know, I know that I've got to have a war. So in that respect, we'll have to see what happens. But for now, have a rest, another brutal 12 round fight for him. And, uh, you know, start pushing for that mandatory position. Finally, and very briefly, uh, Andy Ruiz over the weekend in America saying, you know, Eddie Hearn's trying to get me to go to Cardiff in December, which we believe is December the 14th, is the annotated date for the Cardiff location. Um, but I'm keen to have it in New York. Well, he said he'd be more comfortable to have it in New York. Correct, sorry, yes. I'm more sure comfortable, yeah. I'm sure he would. That, that, well, that, that made me want to do it in Cardiff even more. But um, when do you expect a resolution? We, we will. We will let him know this week. Right. Whether you hear it, 
or not. I'm not sure whether there'll be an official announcement this week. We'll certainly let his team know. Uh, I think December 14th is five months or something like that. You're so settled on, on Cardiff then? No, no, we're not settled on Cardiff. So it could it's still be November 29th. It could, well. could be, or it could be another territory as well. But they're still two of the favourites. Cardiff is the front runner. Yeah, I mean, someone just asked me a percentage, I don't know, 70 percent right? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, you could be in a position where we have Joshua Ruiz too, which is the biggest fight in boxing, and Campbell Lomachenko, all in Britain within four or five months of each other, which is great because, you know, the, the rumour was that British boxing has all of a sudden came to America and 